What up, world? Waxville in Seattle, Washington. You already know what it is. Welcome to Waxville and Fireside Chat. We got Johnny David pulling all the way up from sunny CA. Keep it locked. We'll kick things off real soon. IMG family in the house. We see it. What's good, brother? We see it. Johnny David's pulling up real soon, y'all. Rachel J in the building, we see it. Johnny David's on the way, industry music group recording artist. Keep it locked. Shout out to everybody pulling up, we see it. Johnny David's in the building. Gonna send the request now. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me turn the camera around. <laughs> okay. You got to turn the lights on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm great. Okay, very cool. What's the weather like out there today? Beautiful. It's probably like, I don't know, 70 degrees. <laughs> you're, you're describing one of my favorite places, California. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most of California is burning up right now. But where I live in Ventura, it's it's really it's been really nice. So okay. I, I live like five minute walk to the beach. Okay, okay. So so quick little history on me. I actually traveled all the way to Ventura, California, oh. in a different chapter of life to see Jack Johnson perform. Really, it was the outdoor kind of like nature festival, and I really love Jack Johnson's music back then i still do now wow but back then i really loved it and so i come out to this concert in ventura uh-huh he did a 10 minute set bro 10 what what a this, waste of time this was back in like the myspace days okay so like oh. i remember going to the page and like seeing all like the feedback but yeah i'm from seattle so i flew out to see jack johnson at this one show and that was the one time that i was in ventura california oh well Sorry, it was a crummy, I don't know, <laughs> experience. No, you know what was great, though? There was this one, um, there was like this bar grill in town. And it was the first time that I had ever had an ostrich burger. Oh. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. I, wonder what place, I wonder if that place is still around. What, do you remember what it was called? I remember it was near a, like a robo bank. There was this one strip where they had like a farmer's market, like I think yeah. on, on a Saturday. It was on that strip. There was a library. Yeah. And we went to this one bar, kind of like, I feel like maybe at the start of the strip. Ostrich. Don't yeah, that's, that's your downtown Don't put Ventura. Don't on your burger if you get ostrich. <laughs> that's downtown Ventura right there. I, that's my neighborhood, man. You... I love that. I love that. I see we got 12 on the line. If you're ready, I'll go ahead and kick things off. Yeah, let's do it. Awesome. I want to welcome everybody to Waxville and Fireside Chat. Fireside Chats are similar to interviews. However, we take the time to do the research. We want to make sure that we're not duplicating efforts. More importantly, we want to support and strengthen what's already out there. We got like 10 questions. We got show and tell. I'm so, so excited, folks. Tonight, we are joined by industry music group recording artist, Johnny David. I recognized Johnny in 2022 off of a few releases on industry music group. Here he is, fresh on the heels of a new release coming out. I thought it would be fantastic to bring this brother through, get an introduction, uh, interview conducted with him. So please help me welcome Johnny David. Johnny, welcome. Hey, good to be here. <laughs> so I want to start with a real basic one. Johnny, just tell us where you're from, the instrument you play, and describe your music in one, in one sentence. Where, okay. I'm originally from Oxnard, California, but I live in Ventura now. Um, that, I'm about an hour north of Los Angeles, in case that matters. Um, I play 
play primarily bass. I'm primarily a bass player. Uh, I've been playing since I was 17. I'm 44 now. So you do the math, whatever that is. And uh, I play on most of my live or, or the little videos I shoot here, I, I use my guitar so I can sing along. So I've been playing it. I've actually been playing guitar longer than bass okay. since I was 15. Um, and as far as my sound and what is the sound that I have now, um, my sound has come full, kind of full circle. I started out um, playing kind of oldies inspired church music. And, um, and uh, then I started playing in little, you know, punk rock garage bands with my friends. And, um, but yeah, as I got older, I just, I wanted to kind of get away from that and kind of get back into more of my roots. So it, everything kind of worked out with where I'm at now with the industry. So. Okay. Let me ask you this real quick. Um, what were some of those first tunes that you heard when you were a child? that really kind of move you when you talk about, you know, soul and, and church. Um, I, I think about the arrangements and how they would often be borrowed from big hit records back then. Can you give us a lens into some of those songs that really kind of captivated you and, and was served as almost kind of that, that energizing inspiration to kind of go forward? Well, the, the, the first sort of old soul song that I remember and that that's been my favorite ever since I first heard it to this day is called You Send Me by Sam Cooke. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I remember my father showed me that uh, when I was little. Mm -hmm. He's actually on the live, he's watching right now. What's up, Dad? Shut up, <laughs> um, Johnny's dad, we see it. Um, I even did a report on that song when I was a sophomore. I remember in, in, in English class, this was in like 93, 94, Mm -hmm. um, one of our assignments was to just pick our favorite song, write a report about it, and then we, you know, we come up from the class, read the report, and then we play the song over the radio, you know. So at that time, you know, everybody was doing like Tupac and Bone Thugs or something, you know. And I come out with that one. I did that. I remember the teacher was like, he kind of woke up out of his half asleep, you know. <laughs> I did a I did You Send Me by Sam Cooke. Wow. Okay. Um I and and he's always been a, a big inspiration as far as vocals. His vo his voice is like smooth and rough at the same time, you know. He he it's smooth but like he can get this rasp out of his voice and it's just so gritty and I've always liked that. You know, when singers could do that and I think he was the best at it. Very so I want to go a little deeper, man. Um, when you reflect on your life, um, the past chapters where, where the ink is already dried on the paper, what, what moved you to pursue music in this capacity to the point where you're, you're in recording studios, pressing your, your music to, to vinyl records, to yeah. performing on, on stages in front of massive audiences? What, what's your why for this? Um. Well, man, I, I've come a long, it's a long story um, to, to where I am now. Um, like I said, from my late teens all the way up until maybe my mid-30s, I was doing two, two things. I was playing at church every Sunday, mm -hmm. right? And, or I was in a punk rock band with my friends. And um, after, and I, I was playing in the church band with my father. My father was a pastor, and he also was a worship leader. My sister sang backup vocals. Um, every uh, side note: occasionally, Coda, my cousin, his dad used to play drums before he passed away, and his his dad would play drums with us sometimes. So, family was always very involved in music uh, and church. Um, on the punk rock side, you know, I was just with my friends, you know, we'd play, we were a Christian punk band, so we would, uh, but ironically, we would hardly ever play at churches. We would usually play bars and stuff. Okay. Um, and we would, we would just have fun with that. You know, I don't remember 
ever having aspirations of like you making it you know okay. we just wanted it we just wanted to have fun but after a while it just got old i was like man i want to do something else like i'm just over it and then so i quit that and, and it took me a good four or five maybe six years to to find my my new voice so to speak you know like i i just i didn't know what to do I was going through a lot of changes in my life outside of music. Yeah. So I, I kind of felt like I was in a, a, a limbo. You know, I, I knew what I didn't want to do musically, but I didn't know what I, exactly I wanted to do. I remember that before I ever heard of Soldies, before, before any of that started coming out, yeah. I had like a vision, but I didn't know how to express it, like to, to, uh, to play music that sounded old you know so and I, I i just didn't know how to put it into words or you know i i was just you know go learning some oldies on my guitar you know and then an artist called leon bridges came out i i discovered him i'm like that's that's what i'm talking about like this guy read my mind you know yeah, yeah. i don't know if you ever you, you've heard of him obviously so he had just had that sound you know and um eventually um i I'm, I'm sure we'll get into it you know eventually i came in contact with industry music group and stuff but uh bef before that like i started playing playing some oldies a little bit more seriously with my cousin and and you know things just kind of took off from there yeah ah uh, okay okay i want to um dive back into that five six year period i mean when you say you were you were kind of searching for your voice like we understand what that what that means like when you say it yeah but what was it really like because that is a long time to be to be searching and i imagine when it comes to artistry like this there might yeah. have been some sort of milestone moment or event that got you over that hump where you're like okay i'm here i'm ready can you talk about that yeah well like I said, I knew what I didn't want to do. I didn't want to play punk rock anymore. And, and I, was, I was singing in punk bands. I was always inspired by the punk rock singers that were more melodic, like bands like Bad Religion, you know, uh, Social Distortion, you know, not, not Screamy, all that. I, I never, that's not for me, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't mind playing bass in a band like that if I'm backing up, you know, as a, as a backup guy. But singing like that, no, that, I can't do that. Um, and then, so yeah, when I wanted to, when I wanted to, to let all that go, it wasn't just my vocals, but it was also my bass playing. Like, mm. I, I realized how little I knew about my instrument when I got out of my comfort zone. Wow! I started, you know, I I I I, um, I used to go to these once a year events called Bass Player Live in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and it was basically like a like a little weekend. Uh, what's the, have you ever heard of the NAMM show? Yeah, yeah. NAMM show. So for those of you who don't know, the NAMM show is basically where all the different music companies come and show off their new products. And sometimes celebrities come, you know, sponsored artists. Well, this was just for bass, bass players. Oh, wow. And yeah, so I would go to that and I met some legends, man. Um, like the, uh, the, there's a bass player in particular who stands out in my mind. Um, Oh, I, and now that I'm under pressure, I'm forgetting his name. I'll probably remember it later. But he's played with everybody. Yeah. Like, he, he literally on thousands of records from the, the span of his career. Like, he's an older gentleman. And uh, he overheard me when I was asking a question to a panel. Like, how, how do you get out of a rut when you feel like you're not growing, you know? And he, I remember he turned around and looked at me. And uh, after the seminar was over because i didn't really get an answer that i could relate to from anybody on that panel okay. but he came up to me he 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 came up to me and he's like go and find musicians that play music you've never played before and learn from them so i was like oh like it was just like so simple you know yeah 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 and so i i started going to open mics around my my downtown ventura area and i started sitting in on and learning how to play blues you know learning how to play um all these standard sort of old school funk songs and 
and and like from then my ability on my bass guitar started to grow a lot you know and um that's when i started thinking like i need to find my own voice not just my vocals but on my on my bass like there, there there's some artists like say michael jackson like say a car is driving by and you hear a michael jackson song you instantly know it's him because he's so it's just his voice it's yeah. he's so unique same thing with elvis you know it's elvis like after like a couple of bars of him singing you know or maybe even if it's a singer pretending to be him you're like okay he's trying to sound like elvis because you know they just ha they, they have their own unique sound yeah. and that's something that many musicians either don't even realize that they need to do or don't even care or some of them spend their whole life trying to find it and they never do right you know and 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 a, a lot of it's normal to want to sound like your heroes you know like there's certain bass players that I, I I like to emulate sometimes, but um, you can only get, get so far doing that. You know, you got to find your own voice with your instrument, and you know, consequently for this music I'm doing for my vocals, you know, my own sound, my own style. Sorry, I have one one little small technical difficulty. Give me one second. No worries. Let's see. What's up, everyone? <laughs> See, Florida, Lisa, Ruben. All right. Hi, Florida. I haven't seen you in a long time. I'm so sorry about that. I've never had to do that. I, I realized that I didn't see the charger icon oh. link. Oh, no. And I saw, a little, <laughs> I saw a teeny tiny little red bar. So I said, hold on one second. Um, I, I love that. And I'm so glad I asked that unscripted question because yeah. that explains a lot. Uh, for me, when I when I heard your music, the first thing that came out to me, because I've heard other people play strings, but your voice mm -hmm. is what captivates me. And there's nobody that sounds like Johnny David on the scene. Nobody. Oh. So <laughs> I, I love the way that you were kind of able to not just articulate these different periods throughout your life and things that happen, but it makes sense now when I hear you. I, I get the journey that you took. Um, and, and for me, I think when you put that type of attention to detail into things like vocals, the sounds, like I really yeah. listen to your, to your voice, the way that things change, um, as you're singing highs, lows, I don't have the, 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 um, the vocabulary or, or the understanding to really explain like the details, like, you know, but I listen and I, I pay attention to that stuff and you can tell that you really care about your music, but more importantly, the sound that comes out. And that's a big yeah. deal. Well, um, thanks. Thanks for noticing. Yeah, yeah. I would love to kind of transition and understand how everything came together with Industry Music Group, the, the premier California Soldies label that has that signature sound. Can you tell us about the introduction and, and what life was like after you kind of started hopping in the studio and getting to, to know the, the family, if you will? Because to me, it's very much yeah. a family run business. And, and yeah. it's not just that that's said, but you feel it, you see it, and you hear it through the music. So I just kind of like to know what that was like for you when you, you joined Industry Music Group. All right. Um, well, I, I, I kind of joined reluctantly, believe it or not. It, it, they, they were sort of, I don't want to say they were courting me for a couple of years, but... They made you an offer you couldn't refuse. <laughs> they made me, and I, I first came in contact with my first contact with industry music group was mariah okay Mariah obviously yeah um i was playing a show with my cousin coda in ontario california and um we mariah was there performing also and um uh we we you know in the course of the night you meet all kinds of different people she her she was one of the, the people that i met that night and um the next day she she reached out to me and she had been watching some of my videos and she's like why aren't you singing why aren't you you know why aren't you doing anything other than just you know playing bass you know why why aren't you out here trying to, to make something of yourself and i was like nah i'm i'm not i'm not into that you know i i just want to play bass i'm fine you know <laughs> I, I don't I, I i at that point if i go back a little bit to that five or six year period 
like I was, I was, um, at that point, I was trying to quote unquote make it, and and I, it was just full of disappointment. I was always way too hard on myself, and I noticed that I wasn't enjoying the music anymore. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided to just let it go. Who cares if I don't get recognized? Who cares? I just want to have fun, and I want to and and feel good playing. And I, ironically, when I did that, that's when people started noticing me. Mm -hmm people started noticing my bass playing you know i got a i got a string sponsorship i had a i had my own custom bass that i designed like this guy this guy from a small company a bass maker in maryland on the east coast he reached out to me and we designed a bass together like all this stuff started happening after i gave not gave up but i let go you know what, so was it as simple because listen i i get the let go piece man and yeah and there, there's a lot that comes before you make peace with saying it just like that. Like, what, mm -hmm. what was it, man? That's hard. And then you got back and did it again, but better. Oh, yeah. I I, I think I was just tired of being... I, I, I got to a point where music... Like, it was... Man, I'm, it, was, it was a very dark time. Like, there was other things outside of music that was going on in my life, you know? So it wasn't... It was just a culmination of a combination of things that that you know I, I was going through, but um, I just what I didn't I come to, I came to a point where I both loved and hated music, you know, like I loved it because I loved to play and stuff, but I would hate it because I would never be happy with how my performance, you know, because I was trying to find myself. I I. I was once so confident when I didn't care about making it and I was having fun with my friends, like nothing could dampen my spirits. And then when I decided to to try to make a name for myself as a bass player, I just all of a sudden, like my attitude towards my performances switched and I, I would get really down on myself, you know? Yeah. And even sometimes when I would play at open mics and sing and play some acoustic numbers, like, I didn't like to stick around afterwards because if people complimented me, like I didn't believe them. I'd be like, "There's no way you like that. Just don't lie to me." You know, I just leave. It was like I, I was really in my head, and uh, my my roommate would, he, who's an amazing guitar player himself, he would say, "Bro, you gotta let that go, man. Like, if people are gonna come up to you and compliment you, you should accept it. They, they don't have to do that. They're they're not lying to you, you know." So, um, anyway. Anyway, once I finally let all that go, and then I meet Mariah, and then um, I actually shoot a video with her as the the male the male interest in her video for "You Never Loved Me at All." Mm -hmm. That that was kind of like when I first met the whole industry music group team and everything. Um, I don't know if you've seen that video, but um, there's a part where she's like reminiscing on the good times, and I'm like serenading her. I'm singing to her, you know. Um, playing the guitar and of course you can't hear me because it's her music video but I was actually singing in, in that part you know just to make it realistic yeah, you know yeah. and uh, when I was done Kazell was like bro let's hit the studio here I'll, I'll, I'll give you some money right now down payment and I was like nah because <laughs> when I got when I got that offer all of a sudden those memories of how hard on myself I was yeah. started coming back and I, I kind of got instantly just, I started feeling that twinge of self-doubt again. And I was like, no, dude, no, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> I didn't want, I didn't even want to entertain that, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't want to let it get a foothold in my, my soul again, man, because that was awful. Mm -hmm. um, I was like, I, but I, you know, I was like, I really appreciate it. You know, thank you so much, but I'm just, I'm, I can't right now. I can't, I want to back up my cousin. I'm, I'm happy just doing backup vocals and playing bass for my cousin, you know, I'm, I'm good with that. So, yeah, uh, Kazell and Ruben, they told me, well, you know, the door is always open. I think you got something very unique and, and you have a, you should get out there, man. Just, you know, just the door is always open. So over the next couple of years, I would see them from time to time at shows that I would go play with my cousin. You know, if, if they were there, they would say what's up and, They'd always remind me, doors open, man. You, <laughs> and then uh, eventually, about you know, two years go by, and I sat down and had a talk with my cousin, 
and because I wanted to reassure him too, like, look, I'm not going to stop playing with you ever, yeah. you know, but I'm not getting any younger, man, and not everybody gets this opportunity, so I'm just going to try what it, I, I think I'll regret it if I don't at least try, you know, down the road, and, you know, so he, he was cool, you know, my cousin was cool, and and then, yeah, so that's when we made the two-song deal for Try Me and Sincerely, okay. and and uh, they they wanted to use that as sort of like a trial run, like uh, let us show you what we could do for you. And after after these songs come out, the videos come out. If you want to, we'll see what steps forward if we want to take from there. And yeah, so here I am now. <laughs> wow, wow, very cool. So when I think about the first two forty fives, one thing I really want to understand even more now. How do songs like that come together? Can you talk about inspiration from concepts to to you know putting the pen to the paper, being in the studio, yeah. the feedback that you might receive? Talk to us about that. Well, for you know, try me and sincerely. Obviously, I I didn't have to write anything because those those songs are already legendary songs. Mm -hmm. um, when we, were, I remember when I was having my conversation on the phone with Kazel, we we were having a conference call. Me, Kazel, and Ruben, and they're like, "Name a few oldies that you would want to try." And I, I said, "Well, sincerely, sincerely is actually the song I was singing to Mariah in the video. Wow. <laughs> in the I was actually wow, okay. Yeah. So I was singing that one for her. Uh, sincerely. I was like, "Try Me" by James Brown, and I named uh, my girl. That's another one I really like to do by the Temptations. Okay. And um, they they picked sincerely and try me. My girl, they said would kind of be tough as, because of um, copyright, you know, stuff. I I would still love to do that one. Um, so we decided on um, sincerely and try me. And uh, I remember they sent me the music, and I started. Well, like when I was kind of working out the vocals for Try Me, I started like thinking like, wait, man, this is a James Brown song, the legend of all legends. I'm either going to bomb completely or it's going to like it's n people are going to either love it or hate it. I don't you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm like. And then I started thinking, like, maybe I shouldn't even do this one. Like, it's James Brown. Who do you I think? Who do you think you are doing James Brown? You know, like I started. <laughs> that's that's kind of what I was telling myself. I'm like, man, who do you think you are? Like, trying to do a, a legendary song like that, you know? But um, I, when I was in the studio, I was sharing these thoughts with Tony G, the the, the producer we got, and and he told me he's like. He shut that down real quick, you know. <laughs> you know how he is, straight to the point, you know. He's like, look, you're not going to do it like James Brown. Mm -hmm. You didn't live his life experience. Mm -hmm. You don't know what he was feeling when he wrote that song. Don't even try to do it like him. He's like, you need to figure out how the song relates to you. How, how, you know. And once he said that, I was like, okay, okay, I think I could do this. And, you know. What you what what I did in the studio is is what you hear on the recording. Yeah, yeah. Talk about the harmony a bit because as I listen to these songs, I feel like you just you 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 put the right stuff where I love to hear it. I'm like, oh man, how how do you decide to put it there? What's important to you when you are listening back after you kind of hear your vocals for that first time? Talk to me about how you, what kind of instrumentation you like. Um. Well, for the vocals for. For all my releases so far on um, Industry Music Group, I, I haven't done any instruments on them. It's just vocals. So what they do is they'll, they'll send me the tracks complete, okay. and then I'll lay the vocals on them. So all the vocals you hear on all four of my releases are all me. I didn't have anybody else, you know, come in and do any backup. Of them. So what I what I would do is just sort of I would listen to for my covers. Try me and sincerely, I, I would listen to the originals. And um, I would just try to deconstruct what I was hearing, you know, like what is what are the three parts in the harmony, you know, and so, sometimes I might not be able to hear something. So I'll pick up my bass and try to find it, you know, and then I'll hum it or, you know, sing it like okay. 
it's a lot of little tricks, you know, pick up, pick up an instrument and, and help me. Um, and I, I really like background vocals. Like I like, to me, the way I just, the way I feel they are is all, all of my vocals and my background vocals are like clouds and the music is the earth and the mountains, you know, and all my singing are, are like the, the clouds and the stars above it, you know? So I like, I like to paint a picture if that makes sense. Like if, 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 you know, you hear the movement of the, my background vocals, it's, it's just like brush strokes on a painting, you know, that's the way I kind of always imagined it, you know? Okay. And so what, what was it that you related to with that song after Tony said that? Try me. Um, I was just, just thinking about the times in life that I wanted something or someone, you know, to bad enough and yearned enough for them. And I, and I just tried to, to, um, to bring that anguish, you know, that, that feeling of yearning that you want something or somebody so bad, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily like a specific thing in my life, but, but, um, I, I just, um, I remember fe feeling a sense of yearning when I was singing that, you know, trying to plead my case, that, you know, try me, try me, you know, you'll see, you'll see, you know. Okay. All right. Lonely for Only You is the next single on deck. We've, we've heard it streaming. Tell us how that came about. What, what, what do you want us to know about, about the next release? I think it's your, your best work to date, in my opinion, of, of, of the three 45s that, you know, will, will be out. But talk Chris, to us about Chris Lujan said he's going to hook up some earth for me. <laughs> ah, man, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Lonely for you only. So how did that one come about? Well, that was, I actually, um, I have maybe about three or four notebooks worth of poems. Okay. Um, I, I, I've just written a lot of poems, not, not even with any music in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also, so, you know, side note on that, like I like to practice calligraphy. So I write my poems in calligraphy. Oh, and wow. um, that is, actually that there's, that's kind of highlighted a little bit in my video for Lonely For You Only. You like, the, I'm writing the song out in, in some of the parts, but excuse me. Um, yeah, that was just, that was just a poem. It didn't have a title, but, um, I mean, it wasn't word for word, but the idea was there. Um, <clears throat> it's a poem about a time in the past in my life where there was somebody that I wanted, that I, I had strong feelings for, but I couldn't have because she was with somebody else mm -hmm. at the time. Okay. You know, and, and um, the title for the song, I actually saw, uh, I was, yeah, oh man, a long time ago, I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw um, what, neon lights in, in a club somewhere. And, and it was, it said lonely for you only. I'm like, that's cool. So I wrote it out in cursive, you know, and in my calligraphy and then I forgot about it. And then, um, so when I was trying to think of ideas for to, this track, I, I was flipping through my poem book and I saw that I was like, that's the perfect title for, for this song, you know? And so that's, that's how that came together. That's wild. I was wondering about the title. I really was. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, you got two forty fives out. Talk to me about what it's like to, to hold your music when it's hold, pressed hold on it. a vinyl record. What was it oh, like when you first kind of started to see your uh, records like that? <laughs> Ah, oh, man, I was just, this is, I was very proud. I was very excited. Like, I've always been, since I was a kid, I've always been into, my dad always told me, you're born in the wrong time. Like, you should, you're an old soul, you know. Mm. And, and like, I've always been into the 50s, the 60s, you know, the clothes, the leather jackets, you know. Back when I had hair, I would have the pompadour and all that. <laughs> and, and so to have my 
saws my voice on vinyl man it was just it was unreal like i just you know they had handed me my vinyls when i when they came in and i was just like i didn't have any words you know i was like man like man this is a big deal this is a big deal like i just remember thinking that <laughs> you know that's so but, cool, now you you mentioned you know the style and the fashion and, and one of the things that i think is fantastic about industry music is that they take the time to make these beautiful, high quality videos. And I think it's so important because it allows fans like us, not just to hear the music, but we get to see that painted picture in essence, yeah. through the video. Mm -hmm. And so I had noticed there's one video where you're like walking into a garage and it looks like you're, you're in like punk, punk rock gear. And then like 10 seconds later, you know, it's like Zoot Suit City. So yeah. talk to me about the importance of, of style and presentation yeah. when it comes to your music. Okay, well, we can go with that specifically. Um, that video, that's for Sincerely, um, I wanted to just, just throw little nods out to different parts of my life. And I had, okay, so, so I've always been into old trucks since I was little okay. and I, I have one, but at the, the time of the shooting of the video, it was still in the shop. So I didn't, so Pepe Marquez, the singer Pepe Marquez, he brought his truck and he let me use it for the video. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, so when I get out of the truck in the beginning and the, you know, that, that I was just kind of giving an ode to where I came from, you know, with that kind of punk rock rockabilly style, there's a patch on the back, of, of the, my vest says infirmities on it. And um, I, I actually went to Europe with that band a couple of times because they're, they're, I was the only bass player they knew that had a passport. So, <laughs> so, I got, <laughs> so I got to go play in, you know, in England, Wales, Germany, Belgium, wow. France it, with this punk rock band. So I'm like, you know, I'm gonna put that on and I want to make sure people could see it. You know, this is part of my history. Mm -hmm. You know, um, two of my daughters are in that video. They're like in, in, in the, one of them, um, I, I, I give her a hug. I kind of block her. You can't see her, but I give her a hug before I walk into the bar. It was actually a bar. And um, there's another buddy of mine who I gave a fist bump to. I had been playing drums with him for like probably almost, um, he's been playing drums with me for probably like 15 to 17 years. And, you know, so. I just, I just, I wanted to get as much personal things in that video as possible, you know. And then, so when the song starts and the singing starts, and I'm dressed to yeah. the T, you know, this is me now. You know, this is I'm, this is this is who I am now. You know. And uh, yeah, and so um, that that was shot here in downtown Ventura. The bar that we did it at was a place called Sansui. Everybody around here calls it the sewer. It's just a really small little hole in the wall, but it's been around. It's like a staple down here. Like the, it's a local spot, and they've always been so nice to me. They, I've played countless shows there. They've let me um, book shows myself there. So I just wanted to, hook, I wanted to return the favor and and have a nice video of you know done in their spot. So I'm so glad I asked that question, man, because. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the video. I'm like, okay, this is industry music group. It's soul. What's this dude coming in here with like the punk rock gear? Then the next minute, you know, yeah. like I said, I'm like, I'm like, I got questions. I need answers. But, <laughs> but the, the symbolism and, and your ability to take that creative creativity to the next level, uh, to include that in the song, man, that is dope. I'm glad we documented it. Thanks. I, yeah. You know, like, like, I think that stuff is really, it's, it's cool if you've seen it to now hear this. And you yeah. go back and watch it again, and you're like, oh, man, he's living yeah. in, like, 2025 right now, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't random, you know? It was well thought out. <laughs> no, I love, love that. Now, one of the things that we, we often omit is talking about the hardware, right? Um, we, we focus on the songs, the music, but I would love it if you could kind of tell us about the gear that you're using and why you've chosen to maybe use that particular gear. Okay. Um, 
So you're talking about my instrument. Yeah, uh, instrument. Actually, yeah. <laughs> well, let me get this one out of the way. I have my uh, upright bass here. Holy smoke. What is that, yeah. like six foot three? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's Maybelline. That's Maybelline. Yeah, after the Chuck Berry song. Okay, okay. And, and I've, I've been playing that for, I'd say, a good maybe 15 or 16 years. And um, wow. like I said, I, I, um, I've always just been into that old school kind of look, sound. And to me, you got to have one of those if you're a bass player and you're into old school, you know. That's just okay. me. And, um, yeah, I, I would play in like sort of like rockabilly groups and and um i i every once in a while i still play in like a, a band called blues bullet and it's like rockabilly blues like my guitar player's nuts he's like stevie ray vaughn you know like crazy shredder but when i have my upright bass it just gives it its own unique vibe that and uh, vibe all by itself yeah That's so a fun <laughs> one <laughs> Yeah, so when uh, when I got the, you know, side note about that, when I got the, the tracks for Try Me and for Sincerely to, to record, I was so happy that uh, Joey Quinones is the one that recorded the music for those, that he used an upright bass. I was like, perfect. I'm going to play my upright. I'm going to have it in my video. It's for, for Try Me, it's just me and my upright. And that to me, like, I want to introduce myself to the world is this is who I am. I play the upright bass, not just I play electric bass, too, but but I play the upright. You know, th this is a big part of who I am and what I do. Mm -hmm. And and and, you know, it, it stood out. I believe it stood out to a lot of people. People aren't even today, like I'll bring it and even just pulling it out on stage at a show. People start cheering. I don't even hit a note yet. You know, they already like it. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta tell you something, man. When when I asked about the instrumentation early, you, you you didn't say the name JQ. Anytime, even if that man's just holding shakers, you gotta say it's JQ on the beat. I I, I mean, yeah. I know he he plays a gazillion instruments. I didn't know yeah. he played upright bass as well. And I've always said, man, if I see Joey Joey Q's name on the back of the album. I don't care if he's just changing the light bulb. I'm buying the record. I mean, anything <laughs> that he does, his instrumentation, the way he hits the, the, the snare arrangements, I could, I could mm -hmm. hear that from like 20 miles away and say, oh, that's Joey. Yeah. Joey's coming. So yeah. that's fantastic to know that, that it was Joey behind that and that that is what you're singing over. That's, that's something else. Um, so what about the instrument that or the the upright bass that you helped design you talked about that earlier on is that the one that oh no it, no no it wasn't the, it was an electric bass that i helped design oh. it, um it, yeah um i have a couple of those here too but that particular bass i actually let my daughter borrow it so i don't have it here okay but um but but it, it's a bass similar to this one here yeah this is a this is the fender jazz bass and uh the one that I um, designed, it, it was it was a jazz bass. Okay. So, is that the one? Is that what you are in the video with Coda on the far right? Yeah. Is that what you're playing? Yeah. That's, I got a good memory. Yeah. Here. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're, yeah, we're working. This, we're working, baby. Yeah. yeah. This is a Fender Custom Shop, uh, 1960. Ah. So this ah. is this is meant to emulate the the look and the sound of the basses that came out in 1960 for jazz basses so that's what i was hoping we'd get to right there just what you said that piece right there okay yeah this one here this is a, a 1958 this one was meant to sound and emulate the tone of a, a bass that came out from fender in 1958 and this is a precision bass mm. so yeah i I don't know how deep you want to get. I'm like a Fender bass nerd. Like I could talk forever about the. I have to put it away, otherwise I'll probably <laughs> talk to you, everybody, till they fall asleep. Well, well, let me ask one more question. You know, when, how do you know which 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 to pull? Which instrument am I going to use for this particular song? Can you talk about that? 
Yeah. Um, well, they, the, those two bases that I just pulled up are basically all I need, you know? Okay. Um, for all, for, for all of these fifties, sixties inspired music, the bass tone was really warm and full and round. It's more, more modern sound would be a little bit more, more high end, more glistening, mm -hmm. you know, sharper, you know, but, but if you listen to Motown tracks, like the bass is just, it's just like, you know, it's deep and it's, it's grooving. And these two bases, especially the white one have that all of, that's what they're known for. Like th this bass here, this bass, that came in this style was called a split coil pickup that came out first in 1957 and literally the design hasn't changed like you you could still buy a 2023 precision base and it's basically that like it got it perfect the first time yeah okay. yeah and like just so many people over the years have used it. The, uh, the Motown bass player, um, the, the most well-known one, if you're, there's any bass heads listening, his name's James, James Jamerson. And um, he's the one that, like you hear on um, uh, I Want You Back, Jackson 5, you know, that that bass line, that's him. And and that's that sound, you know? so. So those bases are perfect for this genre, you know, they, they, and it's, and I've had them since before I even played it, you know, like I've, I've just always had an ear for that. And then if you want to go back even farther to the fifties, like for sincerely or early sixties for try me, the upright bass is the sound, you know? So, okay. Yeah, man, th this, this went from an interview to a master's class. Uh, <laughs> I told you, I'm, I, I don't just, like, focusing on vocals only for me, how I've been doing the past two years with um, industry is, is pretty new for me personally. I mean, I've always sang, but I've always considered myself a bass player first and foremost. I'm a bassist. I'm a bassist. But, but now with these all coming out, these, these songs with industry, like now, well, I'm a singer, you know, I sing. <laughs> but... um. My my little footprint on all of this, like I wanna, I wanna do, I wanna be known not just for my singing, but I would, I wanna be known as a singer who plays bass. B bands fronted by bassists and sing, who sing and play bass are very rare. Usually, it's a guitar player or maybe just a singer, you know, that doesn't play an instrument per se. But but a bass player that that's up front, especially the upright bass. That that's pretty rare, and and that's exactly who I am, you know. So I can't say that I I've ever I only know one other person that plays the upright bass, right? So yeah, that's a that's a one of one right there. Um, let's see here, you know, man, we we kind of talked about IMG being yeah. really family based. Yeah. Um, and and I've I've known these guys for years now, and it's it's very true. But also, I want to say within the last week or so. You posted a video on Instagram. You were there with your two daughters. Uh, you, you're playing uh, guitar, and they're harmonizing. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, is, is is this the start of a new band?" So, so give us a lens in. Tell us, tell us about that video, and and what plans you have up your sleeve. Well, that that was last night actually. Okay. That, <laughs> we we recorded that last night. Um, I got the idea a while ago to um include my daughters more um one of my daughters that's in that video her name's leah my she's my middle daughter i have three okay and her and i have been playing music together for a, a long time like i would she's a singer songwriter herself amazing and uh, she plays ukulele she plays guitar she writes she writes books and books of song like i don't understand how i, I wish i could write the way she does like talking about paint a picture with sound she paints visuals the way she describes things it's it's just very poetic anyway i'm proud of her as you could tell <laughs> and um we would play at farmers markets together we'd play out in the street for tips you know mm -hmm. and uh, then she went off to college and now that she's back i got the idea i was like well i should get leah and melody 
learning some backup vocals to come up and, you know, join my band whenever we can. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I think that would be great. N not only, not not just because they're my daughters, but to me, it's it's like carrying on a tradition. Because, like I mentioned earlier, my sister and I played with my dad for years. Mm -hmm. My sister's watching, by the way. Hey, Rachel, and um, so I I think it would, it would just be nice to to have a, you know a new aspect to my bond with my daughters to 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 bring them on stage like a nice big stage you know yeah and and you know I, when we were practicing i was like man you guys are gonna steal the show you guys are gonna steal my show <laughs> and uh yeah so last night was the first night we did that and um i, I think it's really promising you know um don't have any specific plans yet on when we can do a show yet but but you know we got we got it last night was a good start for sure i love that man i um you know I, with the with collecting records and things like that my my daughter at the time she was like two three and i'd be like v stands for vinyl baby you know <laughs> and getting her to to hold the 45s the right way and, and uh -huh. putting them on the turntable i think it's always you know top of mind for me to make sure that that everything i do everything i say that it's an inclusive platform and I want to, you know, show love to my soul brothers just the same as I would my soul sisters. So I love what you're doing with that. And I hope that, that it goes in the direction that you want and that we get to see more live stream videos yeah. of y'all creating. Because yeah. that's awesome. And I think you doing that, that that's role modeling. You're, you're, you're setting the bar for others out there that it's not just okay, but it's cool to do that. And when you bring that bond together, it's a very special thing. So I can only imagine how you felt afterwards. Oh, man. And I was floating, man. I mean, I, I was so excited. Like, we, when we would hit the harmony and, like, they would nail it, I just wanted to, like, jump. I was like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. No, that's real special, man. We got two questions left. One of the last okay. two questions I ask all my guests. And, and I can't wait to, to, to get your response. But is there a quote or a mantra that you keep close to the chest that, that you often think of, you know, through good times, bad times? If so, what would that be? Um, I would, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's a specific quote, but there, I would say that there's more of a habit. Okay. You know, okay. when I'm, when I'm going through hard times, and when I'm going through good times, I always try to remind myself, especially through the hard times, and I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and take the time to thank God for everything good that he's given me. Mm -hmm. My daughters, my music, my parents, my bandmates. Like, especially during the hard times, like when those are the things that, that that I, I, I thank you, thank you, Father God, for, for these beautiful things you've given me. Like, I might be off the rails in my mind on some, stuck on some situation over here, but there's all this that, that's so much more important that I have, mm -hmm. you know. And when, when um, even when I'm going through good times, say I had a good show or, or something like that, like, obvious there's obviously things to be grateful for and thankful for in that situation you know they they come to mind right away but yeah. but yeah i would i would just say if anybody wanted advice like just always think of the things that you're thankful for and and because life isn't 100 percent darkness when you're feeling sad there's always positive there's always something positive there's always you know something good for you to be thankful for mm. What I love about the, the habit that you described, um, I always talk about when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is I say thank you because it's another opportunity to deliver greatness, to, mm -hmm. to you know make bring out the best version of yourself. And what's interesting about all of it, and I'm sure probably you know with the habit, maybe you feel similar, but like the first 50 to 75 times you say it, doesn't hit really the way you want it to. But one day, if you keep it up, 
when you say that you feel it throughout your body and that is like that energy boost yeah so i love that man i love that and thank you for sharing that i think it's it makes sense but it's also great advice for for others um before we take off man i, I would love for you to tell us how we can stay up to date with all okay. things johnny david i'd love to know where we can find your music where we can shop it if you got upcoming yeah. shows things like that yeah um yeah sure so well if you guys are on here on my instagram obviously i'm here you know you guys um thank you so much before i move on thank you so much to all of you guys who follow me and support me um i really appreciate it i see your comments and i try to at least react to them um sincerely sincerely yeah <laughs> I, I call this the gucci label right here man yeah <laughs> yeah um so i i also have a TikTok under the same um handle johnny david music um and my facebook is johnny david 805 johnny david 805 i couldn't do johnny david music somebody else already had that um you can find all my merch on industry music group's website if you search industry music group here on instagram there's a link like they have their link tree in their bio, you can find not only my stuff, I have vinyls, I have shirts, uh, lady shirts. Um, you can find um, the music vinyls for, for Mariah, for Latasha Lee, for Hernando, Color Me Bad, Lighter Shade of Brown, or Napoleon Demps, you know, there's the, uh, Las Lagrimas, there you Hey, what's up, you guys? <laughs> yeah, you got, you, you got there, uh, Las Lagrimas. Uh, merch also vinyl um and so yeah if you go to industry music groups instagram here just go click on the link in their bio and you can find all that stuff um there's one thing i want to show you before we go um it's i don't have a release date yet but here is uh a sneak peek of oh! Oh! <laughs> round and round on side a and then lonely for you only on side B. That's a double-sided so, single. That's a double. Ooh. Yeah. You gotta. How so you gonna do things like that? I, 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 I like, just wanted it to be a surprise. Damn. So not, so that the, the, we're gonna announce a date soon on that. But see, those are the black ones, right? Oh. And then there, there's gonna be a limited number of these custom ones. <laughs> that that looks like a translucent emerald. Yeah. Uh, splatter color variant right there. Yeah. Dang. There's round and round and round, and lonely for you only. Oh so man! Make sure this you keep, best to last. <laughs> make sure you keep uh, following me, you guys. Follow Industry Music Group. Follow Wax Villain. I'm. Well, I'll be posting it when you know when, once we um once I get the info on the release date. But I asked Kazell, I'm like, hey, can I show him? So they can see what it looks like. He's like, yeah, go for it, man. But we'll get it. We're going to get a release date real soon. So stay tuned, I, you guys. I, you <laughs> release date on that. As soon as I saw you put that video up, I'm like, yo, where's this one at? <laughs> yeah. You brandish the brandish, not just the OG black, but the color variant without telling me on my own show. <laughs> we're going to have to the... talk about this in the DMs afterwards, man. <laughs> yeah. what, what about shows, though? Oh. What's next for you show wise? Um, I will be, let's see, I don't have anything this weekend. I will be in, um, I'll be in Fresno the 29th on, Mar uh, I'll be joining Mariah Avila for her, uh, Daydreamer tour. Okay. Her, her tour starts when, uh, Thursday the 27th. Um, and I can't remember if she's going to be in Sacramento or San Jose, but, um, and then, uh. And then she's playing another show Friday. And then Saturday, I'm going to go meet up with them and Fresno, Fulton 55. And then um, Sunday night, the 30th, I'll be in Salinas with her at the Fox Theater. Okay. Okay. And uh, yeah, so uh, as far as times, I don't have those yet. Um, I, I'm waiting on that. And then once, once I get the times, I'll be posting them and... And then, um, so that's the 29th and 30th. And then the week after that, the 5th, I'll be back down in SoCal 
playing at um, Olivera Street, and um, Mariah's going to be there also. And then the day after that, Sunday the 6th, I'll be in West Covina. Man, you're globetrotting, and, baby. You're yeah. globetrotting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, that's just stuff with industry. Like, I have other stuff cooking, too, with my cousin, man, Trejo's music, you know, that, and my, my band. We back him up, and uh, we do, you know, stay tuned for stuff that I do with him, too. You know, I, I play, you know, do my bass thing. I do... The traditional role of a bass player, I'm, a, I'm playing a supportive role, you know, and, and I love it. I love being able to just lay back and, and have a fat groove and, <laughs> you know, do some backup vocals. But, yeah, I'll, I got a lot of shows coming up, and um, there's going to be a lot more. We're going to be doing Texas, Colorado, Arizona, hopefully. We got, we um, got to get out to the Pacific Northwest. We got to get an yeah. IMG uh, review out in the, the Pacific Northwest one of these days, man. I I'm gotta down. ask you this question real quick, all right? Yeah. I know we're still waiting on new music, but is, but is there anything in the studio right now on the PC oh. that, that you could tell us about? What's next, man? I need the sneak peek. Yeah, I, I, there, there is going to be another release. It's going to be a cover. I think we're going to announce it at the beginning of August. So I, I don't, I don't know if I, if, if I should say the Keep name. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> I'm gonna do a cover. Okay, I'll, whatever. I'm gonna do a cover of a song called "Diamonds and Pearls" <gasps> by a group called The Paradons. So uh, that <laughs> that that that's actually it's finished. It's ready to go. So they're gonna do a release date. Hopefully, you want my email address in the Dropbox now? Do you need anybody <laughs> to A and R that real quick? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta talk to Kazelle, man. Talk. <laughs> that's a big. But song. Uh, holy shit. Yeah, so that, that that'll be coming out soon. They'll, they'll announce it soon. Okay. Um, and I I have other music. I have other original songs that have been recorded, and there's at least let's see one, two, three, four, four other songs, not count or counting, including Diamonds and Pearls, that are are recorded and you know ready to go eventually. So, and then um, they just sent me another track for me to write to, so I'm gonna get on that soon and. I love and right, right, yeah. So. This is fantastic, man. I just want to tell you, um, you know, since since seeing you come on this scene that I that I I, I look at and I pay attention to, in 2022, I'm so glad you're here. I think that that, that you. you know you being here, man, you you definitely fill a space that that was missing before. And so to have you here, to have you putting out music, to be doing it at Industry Music Group in the state of California, is so important to us as fans. You know, lovers of of, of soul, the vinyl community. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're going to continue to support you, brother, and, and we can't wait to hear what's next. But thank you so much for, for, you know, joining me tonight and, you know, really kind of giving us a lens into how you got here. I think this talk was super important, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I had a great time. The time flew by, man. <laughs> Fast hour. All right, y'all. Um, any last words before we dip? Anything you want to say to the people in the stands right now? Um, just again, thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you for your, for following me. Thank you for streaming my song. Um, Lonely for You Only has has been performing really well, all because of you guys. Um, I was able to shoot the video for that one um, here, also here in downtown Ventura, different spots, so you guys get a little glimpse into, you know, where I live out here by the beach. I'm I'm a beach bum, man. That's, I'm a beach bum. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm going to be on vacation soon from work, and I'm going to go boogie boarding every day. But oh, uh, Enjoy yourself. We, on, we only get one shot at this thing called life, you know? Yeah. All right, y'all. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Waxville in Seattle, Washington. We're out of here.